very uh, excited to be able to take the opportunity to do this uh, and very unusual we're going to be speaking to somebody from uh, ESPN it'll it'll be about the subject of professional wrestling that doesn't tend to go together you don't tend to associate that oftentimes but uh, we do have with us here uh, host and uh, reporter from ESPN Jeremy Schapp joining us on the sports talk network.com lines here so uh, Jeremy welcome to the program tonight thanks for having me Oh, it's a pleasure to have you on the FDH Lounge, uh, Jeremy. I was very intrigued when uh, my producer, uh, Steve Servillo, our, our, our so-called uh, FDH New York Bureau, uh, he informed <laughs> me uh, yesterday, Steve's quite a guy. I guess you got to talk to him for a while. And, uh, yes. He, uh, he's a very passionate guy, loves pro wrestling, uh, loves, mm-hmm. uh, loves sports. And, uh, yeah, you know, quite, quite a guy. He called me, and he, he, he pitched me on this. I said, this would be great. I'd love to have him on. And uh, we, we made this happen, and uh, he was telling me about this. I want you to tell our listeners about this. It's going to be, I believe, uh, April 14th on your, uh, your e, uh, E3, uh, I'm sorry, E60 show. And, uh, That's right. It's a tough one. You know, uh, <laughs> we, we've been on the air for a couple of years, but still people want to say 360 because of the whole Anderson Cooper thing and all that. But it, it is E60, and we're coming back on April 14th. I told myself I wasn't going to do that. I psyched myself out, Jeremy. You know, it's a, you know, you guys have got ESPN 360, as you said, Anderson Cooper. And I thought in my head, I'm going to say E60, but I botched it. I knew I would. But uh, tell the people what it's going to be. It's it's a great news magazine show. I understand you got a documentary. You know, or I don't know if you'd call it a documentary piece or whatever it would be about WrestleMania, but uh, please tell the listeners. Yeah, I mean, what, one of the... Uh... You know, pieces that week, uh, our first show since our fall season. We're coming back um, this spring. Uh, we take uh, usually college basketball season off because uh, there's so much basketball in the air. But I- I'm doing a piece about WrestleMania on the occasion of WrestleMania 25, which is actually Sunday in Houston. A- and looking back at really kind of how WrestleMania over the course of the last quarter century not only changed the landscape for professional wrestling, uh, but really in a lot of ways had a very significant impact on the sports entertainment industry uh, and, and how Vince McMahon individually you know, played such a major role in, in creating what we now think of as the modern sports entertainment spectacular. And I really don't think that his significance can be overstated. I mean, you know, what he achieved, what he's been able to build, and of course a lot of it has been controversial, and, uh, you know, all of that is addressed as well. But he's one of the, he's one of the major figures, really, in the sports entertainment industry. And as I said, on the occasion of WrestleMania 25, which kicked it all up a notch back in 1985 with all the celebrities and all the big sports stars showing up at that first WrestleMania at Madison Square Garden, we're taking this opportunity to tell that story. Well, you know, it's really interesting that you say that, Jeremy, because I, uh, as, I, as I look at that, and, and, and from what I saw on Wikipedia, you and I are uh, about a couple months apart in age, so we, we can relate to these things probably the same way in terms of the framework of growing up. Me, personally, I'm an old-school guy. I, 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 I bemoan when I'm watching the World Series that I'm not getting the orchestral music, you know, like when I was a kid. I bemoan a lot of the stuff that we get bombarded with these days. Sure. So I'm old-school. Are you saying, or is part of your premise that, that some of these things that are a part of the modern spectacle of mainstream sports television are being influenced by Vince McMahon and and what he has wrought? I don't think that there's any doubt about that. I really feel that way. I mean, look at what the Super Bowl is now. Look at the kind of, you know, um, celebrities who show up, the focus on the music acts at halftime. Vince McMahon really help create all of that with the over-the-top production values at WrestleMania, you know, with, uh, you know, Liberace and Muhammad Ali and the Rockettes and all of that stuff. He's the guy who, 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 who moved all of that into the mainstream. I mean, back in 1985 at the Super Bowl, the kind of acts they had at halftime, you know, it was still high school marching bands. Um, and, and he changed the whole dynamic between glitz and sports, and entertainment. And these were all conscious decisions. These aren't things that just happened. You know, until Vince McMahon came along, believe it or not, pro wrestling still existed in a universe where the guys kind of pretended it was still real, real in the sense that the outcomes were not predetermined. 
I mean, everybody kind of knew that it was fake, but but the wrestlers wouldn't wouldn't admit that, and the establishment wouldn't admit it. And Vince McMahon came along and he said, you know what? What we have here is drama. What we have is entertainment. What we have is is not something where we have to pretend that it's real in the sense that you know the, the outcomes are, are being determined by the athletes as they're in the ring. And when he made that decision to strip away the artifice, it became tremendously more popular. Oh, it really did. And it was horrifying to a lot of the old timers, you know, the Luthezes of the world, you know, the Vern Gagne's will tell you, you know, the world went to hell in a handbasket when he did that. But, you know, what's really interesting, you're talking about things kind of in an indirect way, how he influenced uh, the, the world of sports and coverage and stuff. There, there's a direct way also. I mean, you, you can win a bar bet in any bar in America by, by uh, asking somebody, who's the guy who invented the overhead foot cam that you see during the football games here now? I mean, that that's was right. Vince McMahon with the XFL, and that's become so ingrained into the way that we watch football on TV right now. That's a direct thing, Jeremy. That's a direct thing. I mean, uh, you know, he was as responsible as anyone for the advent of pay-per-view for the creation before pay-per-view he's one of the guys who really created closed circuit uh you know was one of the pioneers i should say not create but one of the big guys in closed circuit events the first wrestlemanias were closed circuit they weren't pay-per-view they went pay-per-view after a couple years and that you know was just an explosion and you know uh, it, certainly, this is not a value judgment about the product that he has created, uh, because you know the, you can have a lot of qualms with some of the stuff that's out there. But there is no doubt that he keeps millions and millions of people around the globe, not just in the United States, entertained and absorbed in his product. And it hasn't always been easy. I mean, he had a fend off uh, Turner and WCW in the '90s. I mean, there was a time when they were losing every week in the ratings battle on Monday night to WCW. He fought them. He defeated them. He consolidated his empire. It's a remarkable success story from a business standpoint. And, and, you know, when you talk about people who've had an impact on their industry, I mean, he's not just the guy who's in charge of basically the industry, the way that, you know, say Roger Goodell's in charge of the NFL. He's not just the guy who owns the product, the way that all the owners in the NFL own their teams. He's not, He's also one of the biggest performers in the business. I mean, he is one of the biggest stars that they've ever had in the history of pro wrestling as a character in the ring. Um, and he's also the creative force behind the storylines. Uh, it's it's amazing the extent to which this one man has exercised control over this entire enormous segment of the entertainment industry. I tell you what, you're, you're absolutely right about that because, again, when you look at him just, you know, when he's got his business shoes on, that's one thing. But I'll tell you, I mean, and as somebody who, God help me, has watched more of this over the years, I mean, you know, pretty much a, in a straight line dating <laughs> you admit back. admit it. It's okay. It's yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I can admit to that. Uh, dating back to, oh, say, 1983. But I, I tell you, <laughs> he he's a guy, Jeremy. His facial features, the way that he can convey things on camera, he is one of the elite guys in the history of the business. So if you're just to look at one of the important aspects of being a performer, I mean, there's there's more to that than conveying things through facial emotion, but that's a big part of it. He, he, he's, in, he's in the top 1% in that area of people who've ever been in the business, much less anything he ever did in a business sense. You know, I'd like to see Roger Goodell, David Stern, somebody else match that. It's, it, it really is amazing, and I'll admit, I'm, I'm not a pro wrestling aficionado. I mean, I've done a number of stories over the years, and I've occasionally, you know, tuned it in, you know, just, just by accident, you know, mm-hmm. switching channels. Um, but uh, I've been watching recently, and I've been, you know, watching documentaries about him and stuff that the WWE has produced, stuff that other people have done, and... Um, it's, it's just amazing what you see. I don't think people who don't follow it have any conception of what it's like. I mean, that it's basically a soap opera. Right. And I, I was watching a couple of nights ago, you know, they were doing a show, and, you know, it's the week before WrestleMania, so all these storylines are coming to a head, and John Cena, who's one of the biggest stars in the country right now, I mean, uh, you know, and, um, and Edge are having this, you know, discussion about how they're going to conspire or not conspire against Big Show, you know, with WrestleMania coming up, and I'm just, in the acting that's going on, and the lines, and, the, the, you know, the way they deliver them, it's like, it's like, um, silent movies, basically, because it's all about those facial 
features and kind of the exaggerated gestures and you know it's it's not um shakespearean uh it's it's something much more visceral Oh, uh, exactly. You know, it's, you know, Shakespeare for the common man, one might say, perhaps. I mean, that's, you know, it, it, when, when you look at the, this, this business, it's, it's really kind of funny because there are all those aspects to it uh, that you're talking about, but there are other things as well. And, and, and when you invoked uh, portrayals of it in media, I have to ask you about this. Of, of course, one of the big, big, big things over the course of the last six months or so has been the movie The Wrestler mm-hmm. that's come out that's really put a different spin on the business and, and what it does in, in many ways. Whether intentionally or unintentionally, it has helped to shine a light on the underbelly of the business. So, some of the stars from the boom period who I, I think are reflected. It's a composite portrayal that Mickey Rourke is doing. He's sort of a composite of a lot of these guys who, who made it big, lost everything, clinging to it on the fringes here. Is, is there anything on, on, on the uh, the E60 show here uh, that, that focuses on, on that part of the business? And some oh, of the yeah. I mean, certainly. You know, I mean, uh, you know, there, there have been you know a lot of very valuable valid questions asked about the WWE in the last 10 years, uh, particularly pertaining to the, you know, spectacularly sad numbers of, uh, the spectacularly sad fact that so many former wrestlers have died so young, current and former wrestlers, and, and there is such a high mortality rate for these guys, and they live such hard, difficult lifestyles, and, you know, that's reflected in the film The Wrestler, but, you know, here is a movie that really paints a very dark picture, a very grim picture of the wrestling business. You know, it's the kind of thing uh, that you would think the industry would run away from. But that's kind of the genius of Vince McMahon. Uh, you know, here's this movie that makes his business look really grim. Who's going to be the big guest star at WrestleMania on Sunday? Mickey Rourke. And you know, and that's another thing here too. That, we, that, that when, when you're looking at him versus comparing him to other executives, I don't ever see Roger Goodell, uh, Bud Selig, anybody like that saying, "Just spell my name right." But that's what Vince McMahon is all about. That's that's very true. I mean, you know, I, I he says that, and I think to a large extent, obviously, he means. I mean, if it's good for the business, it's good for him, and he doesn't care. I mean, you you don't see. Um, you know, you, you wouldn't see Roger Goodell or his predecessor, Paul Tagliabue, inviting Oliver Stone to the Super Bowl to be a special guest you know, after any given Sunday came out. Uh, they weren't particularly happy with ESPN when Playmakers was on TV. Uh, but Vince McMahon says, hey, this is what people are buzzing about. People are going to go crazy if they see Mickey Rourke there. If he actually gets in the ring and does something, that'll be what people remember from this WrestleMania. So he says, you know what? I'll take the bad with the overwhelming good. And that's, which is not to say that I don't think that the criticism and, uh, you know, the, the, the blame, <clears throat> which is often uh, laid at his feet, doesn't bother him sometimes. I mean, he's a human being like everybody else, and, you know, uh, I think he's got a thicker skin than most, but he's still, uh, uh, he's still a human being who I think is susceptible to uh, uh, being stung by criticism. Exactly. You know, whether or not he uh, he, he shows it or, or whether he can steal himself not to show that, I guess, you know, would, would be the case. What we always like to do, uh, Jeremy, is is give our uh, guests a chance to plug anything here. As you said, the E60 coming back on here after the uh, college basketball-induced uh, hiatus. Anything else going on with the program here that you'd like to tell the people about? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm working on some interesting stories. Uh, I'm working on some stories that over the course of the season I, I think will, will be pretty good. One of them is about Dwayne Goodrich. Uh, the cowboy, the former cowboy who uh, was in a car accident six years ago that killed two people late at night on a Dallas highway, and he's been in jail for the last three and a half years. And kind of his journey um, through that that nightmarish experience that he caused, killing two people on the highway, and you know the the whole idea of you know when does someone deserve forgiveness? How much do they deserve to pay for the crimes that they committed? Uh, when and if uh, they should be, you know, afforded an opportunity to to resume their lives as as free men? Uh, you know, that, that's an interesting story, and you know, I, I think we'll have a lot coming up that's going to be good on E60 this season. 
Well, that, that does sound uh, very good. And I have to say, just in, in conclusion, uh, Jeremy, in, in addition to our uh, appreciation for your work, your work on ESPN, I would be remiss if I didn't mention this to you here uh, tonight on the show because ever since when I was a little kid reading a book that uh, somebody wrote about uh, George Steinbrenner, uh, I was a <laughs> tremendous admirer of, of your dad's work. I, I felt like kind of influenced me a little bit as a writer. I'm sure you hear that a lot from people. You probably can't hear that enough. The tribute that uh, ESPN ran to him, the line that he had in there about, uh, I collect people, I, I actually thought that was profound enough. I, I was called upon to give a, eul a eulogy to another kind of like-minded type soul, and I actually used that and credited that line to him. I thought it was really profound, and again, as somebody who was just influenced by his stuff that much, I, I can't let this chance oh, uh, go to mention that to his son. I appreciate that, and that, that was my dad. You know, he, he, loved, he loved the job, <clears throat> he loved the business, he loved meeting new people, and... and um, he had so many friends and people whose lives that he influenced. And really, uh, every day, you know, he just loved going to work. Exactly. You know, and well, well, people who have family like that are, are very uh, fortunate. Uh, I, I was. Uh, you, you certainly were, Jeremy. And, uh, again, as I said, appreciate uh, your work as, as well as the body of work that he had and uh, everything. And uh, it was just a pleasure to have you on tonight. This, this sounds like it's going to be a great feature two weeks from last night on ESPN. It sounds like it's going to be great. We're going to look forward to seeing it. And uh, it would be a pleasure to have you on again sometime. Anytime. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much, Jeremy. All right, Jeremy Schaap, everybody, from uh, ESPN, and uh, just really a uh, pleasure to have him on. Burrell, that, it, it, there's a reason a lot of times I don't like to do too much of a pre-interview with somebody. I, I like to kind of find out stuff as we're going along. I didn't know the slant was going to be that, but that's a hell of a slant that he helped make sports television what it is. Because I wonder what the hook is. They're covering pro wrestling. It doesn't have anything to do with sports per se. That's a hell of a hook that he's working on. Yeah. Oh, and Vince McMahon is magnificent. I mean, he's he's great. And I'm, I intend to watch that myself and, and see if there are any new insights into this industry and, and, and Vince McMahon in general.